Hey everybody, it's Gavin Syme here, coming to you from the camper in Arizona as we head towards uh, New Orleans and Imaging 2012. But we were talking the other day about histograms on the Facebook page, and I said I wanted to take some images and kind of analyze a given image and its related histogram and just talk about histogram stuff in a kind of informal way. So I'm going to start that here today. I thought, what better way to do that than... Uh, just do a, a quick video. So what I have here is a senior portrait that I did this fall, and it's uh, a black and white. It's a silver that's been converted with silver shadows. And just real quick, let me go and reset this to the color so we can see what we're starting with. So here is what the image started with. And I'd say it's a little bit underexposed, but it is pretty close. We're definitely on the low key side. And up here on this histogram, you can kind of see what we have here. We have the gray one, which is the overall our, our, our luminance histogram. And then we have an, uh, the histogram that shows each individual color channel as well. Now, we're going to kind of focus on the overall histogram today versus getting into every subtle little nuance, because I just want to do a little quick hit on this and analyze the histogram for this image. Now, also, in Lightroom here, you can see if I click on different areas of the histogram, I can affect exposure, and it kind of gives me tools so I can actually ch alter things right there from the histogram. But uh, this isn't a Lightroom tutorial, really. It's more overall look at uh, histogram for this particular image. So whatever program you're using, there's probably going to be similar tools to what we have here. But let's really focus on the histogram. So what do we have here? We see this histogram. First of all, if you're new to the histogram, it looks really techy and nerdy and uh, can be complicated. But the truth is, it's fairly simple. And when you know it, it makes you look really smart. Um, effectively, it's a graph that represents the tonal values, how light and dark the pixels throughout the digital file are. Left is dark and right is light is the general guideline here. And then, of course, we have our midtones and all that kind of stuff. So looking at this histogram, we see what we have here. We have a little bit down in the black range, uh, some of the darker areas. We got a lot in there because this is kind of low key. So we see a lot of area that's dark here, even though it's not black. So we can already look at this histogram and see it corresponding to what we're seeing on the screen. All right. Then we have some midtone uh, areas. We get down into some highlights excuse me, to the lights, and then a little bit in the highlights, not much in the highlights here. So this is where this image is right here, and this is a good looking histogram for this image. Let's actually click right up here and turn on the clipping indicators for black and for white. Okay, so there's no white clipping. We saw a little bit of blue coming in here, just a little bit of black clipping. Not a big deal in this case. Black clipping in general is going to be more acceptable than white clipping. White clipping can cause you problems even in a print and in the way an image prints, black clipping, and I've even asked international competition judges about this, uh, a black clipping is likely to be more acceptable than a white clipping. And you can see a lot of famous images throughout history where these, there's these really rich blacks, even going down to pure blackness. So I don't hesitate to have a little bit of black clipping, but I try and keep it to a minimal. I'd rather have, even if it appears really black, I'd rather not have it completely clipped in the black. I try to make sure I have no white clipping. Um, you know, white white clipping is generally a bad thing. We see it a lot, and I, I remember I used to do it a lot when I was starting out. But it's 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 uh, rare to have a good reason for clipping your whites. And in fact, if you're entering in any kind of serious uh, professional competition, and you know judges see an image and they see white clipping all over the place, you better have a darn good reason for it, or you're going to get nailed. But back to this histogram, what do we see here? Uh, first of all, let's just tweak some things a little bit. This image looks good as it is, but let's just see what happens. What if we cranked up the blacks? All right, look what happens to the histogram. It goes all the way to the left. Let me turn off the indicator so we can actually see the image. And the reason it all turned blue is because we've clipped basically everything. So it scrunched all this over. If we pack against one side or the other, that means we're clipping it. Now, when you take an image in camera, Histograms are great. It starts in the camera, guys. And if you follow me, you know I'm all about getting the exposure right. I wouldn't say use the histogram as an exposure meter. The histogram is a guideline. It's a graph that you can look at and kind of see where those pixels are falling. So let's say I'm in this scene, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan of using the zone system for digital. So you'll, you'll hear me referencing that a lot. But uh, if you haven't read that article, head over to f164.com and check out why you need the zone system for digital. But let's say I metered her face and said, hey, I want her face at zone 6 which is kind of this lightness level here. All right, then I could uh, plan my image. I mean, I'm seeing it now in the camera before I release the shutter. That's the way to really make an image sing. 
then I take the image and now I can glance at my histogram and see if everything is jiving. Is my camera able to capture the range of this scene based on the exposure I made? If not, you know, I can consider variables. Maybe I need to adjust my exposure. Maybe I need to bracket, you know, whatever. That's a topic for another day. But the bottom line is the histogram shows me what the camera was able to capture in that image. It doesn't tell me exactly what her face is exposed at. I still need to meter properly for that. I still need to be able to plan and visualize my scene. The histogram is a powerful tool though because it's much more reliable particularly in the camera it's much more reliable than the LCD screen you know it the histogram is kind of like your instrument panel in an airplane you need to understand it and then you need to trust it far more than your LCD screen I've got myself into trouble more than a few times by sit looking at the LCD and getting tricked by it and saying oh no I need to do this instead of trusting my histogram and ended up screwing up an image so learn that histogram and, and trust that histogram there's no one right histogram for every image because if this was a high key image it would kind of be inverted we'd see bunches of pixels over here on the right because the bigger the mound the more pixels there are in that color range so if this was let's say she was on like a white background well her hair would still be dark her her, her shirt would still be dark so there will be some darkness but there will be more in the light and then a little bit in the highlights as it would taper off so it would basically be flipped if this was a high key and uh we can look at the histogram and tell a lot about what's going on. We could go into the curves. Let's just look at the curve here. And let's say we adjusted our lights. And we can see our histogram change dynamically according to that. We're flattening the image out. If I really were to flatten this image out, and this is going to be ugly, but you can see how it, the histogram kind of just bunches up. It's this little mountain towards the middle. Sometimes it's tempted to just photograph things so that we have a nice mid-range histogram. In general, you're not going to get the best images that way. I mean, it's it's it comes back to the same thing of the better you get it in camera, the better off you are. You know, there's different schools of thought. Let me go back to the snapshot on this. There's different schools of thought on managing dynamic range. And there's people that say, oh, expose to the right. Expose over, and then you can dial back. Because as long as you're not clipping, it's easier to bring down those highlights than it is to bring up shadows. Because there's less information to pull out in shadows. So if you, if you underexpose and you're bringing up shadows you're going to start getting artifacts and stuff and noise really fast. And I'm sure we've all seen this in our own images. And it's true that it is harder to bring up shadows. But my line of reasoning on all these these little tricks and all this these schools of thought on on exposing, which are good to know, by the way, because sometimes, you know, there's you never know what situation you're going to be in. But in general, my line of reasoning is expose dead on right from the start. If I want her face at zone 6, if I want her face in this lightness value, which is zone 6 to zone 7 right here, Expose for it. Set up your exposure. Expose the way you want. You know, the histogram is that guideline. It tells you a lot about your image and gives you information on if you're dialed in. And then as you come in here and edit it, you can work with it. You can make sure you're not clipping shadows and highlights or whatever it is that you want to do to fulfill your visualization of that image. So that is histogram tales for today. Just kind of an analysis on the histogram for this image. It's a good looking histogram. This is a, just the raw file. It hasn't had any uh, serious refinements yet done to this particular file. But Histogram tells us a lot, and pretty much whatever program you're in, the concept of the histogram is going to work the same. And when you're in camera, the concept of it's going to work the same as well. Although bear in mind in the camera, you are basically looking at a JPEG preview on the back of the screen. Even if you're shooting in RAW, it's, it's, it's rendering a preview to show you that histogram. So as, as we've seen here, you might actually be able to pull out a little more information than initially is shown in the histogram. You might be able to adjust things and shift that histogram around, even if, if it looks like it's clipping a little bit. For example... I got a little bit of clipping right here, but I could crank up in some fill light and bring that out of there. Okay, in this case, I'm not because that little bit of, of dark clipping there doesn't bother me that much. But uh, the histogram is changeable, but if you've truly clipped your black or your white in your raw file and there's no information, you're pretty much toast. I mean, you can paint in detail and you, there's tricks for managing it. Uh, that's some of the stuff we cover in the Cloning Magic Workshop. But the bottom line is you don't want to clip an area that you need information in. So watching that histogram can tell you a lot about that as well. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed. Take care, guys. Talk soon.